uh, two presentations. Two presentations. The first one is uh, bilateral trade free trade agreements for trade promotion boon or bane for Pakistan. The author of the paper is uh, Dr. Farad Mahmood, and the discussant is uh, Dr. Usman Kadir. Then we have another paper on education and child disability in Pakistan, policy, sorry, policy analysis. The paper is by Dr. Usman Ahmed and the discussant is uh, Dr. Muhammad Jahangir Khan. So let's begin with the first one that is free trade agreements. Dr. Farhat, over to you. Dr. Farhat, sir, cyber disconnect to you, maybe. Yeah, let's. Take one at the eclat and her. Gigi, on a joint curly about. ट्रेडिंगे So basically, my main idea for this study was to check whether FTAs are creating any sort of benefit to Pakistan in terms of trade promotion or not. Or otherwise, uh, uh, we could uh, say that Pakistan is blindly signing FTAs by following the footsteps of its neighboring countries. Uh, so the first question is. Uh, basically what is the need of an fta especially in the presence of wto uh, for this we need to uh, see at both aspects of free trade agreements a free trade agreements could generate a positive or negative uh, uh, have could could have positive or negative aspects so uh, for trade policy makers they have to analyze uh, or uh, do the cost benefit analysis between its positive and negative uh, aspects for example fta's uh, if we talk about uh, from the positive aspect fta's could generate uh, or create incentives for firms to indulge more in international trade because fta's offer tax incentives for trading firms which consequently enhance firms productivity by inducing tougher competition and by providing cheaper imported imports and this brings improvement in quality of products larger economy of scale and enhancing variety of products and thus stimulates the invest investment climate of the country and at the same time fts could generate negative impacts for example the rule of origin hub and spoke model varying country size lack of institutional and good governance insufficient allocation of resources to the needy sectors and limited movement of factors of production under the regime of free trade so uh, we can say that all in all signing an fta and the induced uh, trade opportunity does not always go hand in hand therefore when an fta become additional trade barriers and discouraging firms to materialize its opportunities it is imperative to check uh, both aspects of ftas before signing or before entering uh, into the negotiation of uh, ftas so among many other uh, reasons the top 3 reasons why do uh, why ftas spread around the globe are number 1 is halting speed of wto negotiations number 2 is political factors and number 3 to resist the domination of big powers in world trade countries are uh, interested to sign bilateral fta's uh, especially to go into deeper uh, negotiations or to enhance uh, trade volumes without uh, delaying to resolve the uh, issues relating to trade policy this is because uh, uh, basically fta's do not just reduce and eliminate tariff rather they also help to address behind the border barriers for example fta's could encourage investment and improving trading rules uh, for example uh, intellectual property rights e-commerce sps and tbt and this would be much easier uh, 
to solve or to formulate new rule, new rules if the trade agreement is among uh, two or three nations instead of many other uh, nations so uh, what is the reason uh, to study uh, fta uh, for pakistan or for asian region so from this graph you can see that uh, ftas have a significant impact on asia's trade policy if you can compare uh, just over a period of 12 years just in south asia the signed ftas have increased from 0 till 45 likewise in other asian region you can see that uh, the trend is increasing so the spread of ftas is economically important for asia since 2000 mainly due to asia's advanced production network and so via ftas asian countries can get deeper regional integration in order to enhance their trade volumes and to uh, uh, formulate trade policies in order to re uh, revolve other trade related issues like uh, how to uh, increase digital uh, trade or uh, how to resolve sps and tbt uh, issues more easily okay globally uh, over a span of 20 years the number of ftas has increased from uh, 51 to 271 and particular to pakistan uh, the current status of pakistan ftas is uh, total number is 32 out of which only 9 are signed and in effect the rest are in pipeline so because of this increasing trend i was interested to investigate whether they are creating any sort of trade promotion or not and for my study i have analyzed only uh, six signed and in effect ftas uh, so the problem statement was that in contrast to wto fta uh, let liberalization is discriminatory and conditional discriminatory means that uh, fta offer preferential uh, preferential tariffs only to fta members and conditional in a sense that uh, for example rules of origin condition are imposed on the fta members in order to prove the origin of the imported good in order to determine its eligibility for tariff concession or eliminations so the impacts of an fta on trade is therefore inconclusive depending on these two opposing uh, measures i mean that the first uh, measure which is discriminatory indicates that trade could be stimulated from preferential tariffs offered and trade could be reduced due to the complexity of rule of origins imposed i mean ke fta sign karne ki wajah se tariff ki jo reduction mil rahi hai usse trade badh bhi sakti hai lekin at the same time जब उसके ऊपर रूल ऑफ रीजन की कंडीशंस लगा दी जाती हैं तो मे बी मेनी ऑफ द एक्सपोर्टर्स आर नॉट एबल टू कंप्लाई विद दोज रूल्स एंड आर नॉट एबल टू अवेल दैट टैरिफ रिडक्शन फैसिलिटी सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट ट्रेड वॉल्यूम कुड बी रिड्यूस्ड इंस्टेड ऑफ इंक्रीजिंग ड्यू टू दाइनिंग ऑफ एफ टी एस मोर ओवर देर इज अ लॉन्ग लिस्ट ऑफ सेंसिटिविटी प्रोडक्ट्स विच इज इंक्लूडेड इन एफ टी एस दिटी सेंसिटिव products means that they are exempted from tariff concessions so while fta uh, proliferation continues the effect of an fta on trade remains an open empirical question to be tested whether they create a positive or negative impact so the significance of this study uh, this study examines only in effect ftas of pakistan and pakistan is a good case to be studied because of uh, two reasons number 1 pakistan is the first runner up in south asia after india in the number of uh, signing fta's so since the trend of signing fta's is increasing in pakistan therefore there is a need to investigate its uh, impact or to do the analysis and secondly like other developing countries state especially export sector is crucial uh, and uh, for the stimulation of long term economic growth and uh, pakistan signs and negotiates with other south asian partners with the expectation that ftas would open up more uh, market opportunities and uh, after that pakistan would be able to materialize its geographic and comparative advantage so but uh, nonetheless uh, so far there is a dearth of analysis on trade stimulating effects of ftas for the economy of pakistan and the limitation uh, for this study is that uh, since this study focuses only on pakistan therefore the results of this uh, research study would be applicable would not be applicable to other countries 
Uh, for other countries, uh, the results could be different depending upon the nature of their FTS, time duration, and independent variables uh, included. However, this study could raise research uh, attention on how an FTA effect is measured. Dr. Farah, may I request that since uh, we have two papers, so please focus on the main items. Okay. Okay. limitation, so there were two main uh, research objectives for this study. First uh, was to calculate tariff gap, which is basically the difference between MFN and preferential tariffs. And second objective was to examine the trade stimulation or trade distortion impacts of in effect FTAs. And this I did for total exports and uh, for the disaggregated exports from one till eight digit, and also for agriculture and manufacturing sectors. Uh, so this table basically shows that uh, I wanted to show uh, the FTA partners of Pakistan among, uh, uh, since I did the analysis of SAFTA, so among South Asia, I have uh, analyzed that uh, Afghanistan and Bangladesh are, increasing, uh, are increasingly becoming important for uh, Pakistan's export destination. So therefore, there might be a need to sign an FTA with Afghanistan and Bangladesh if Pakistan is getting a, a positive impact of those FTAs. And then uh, among Commonwealth, UK is the most important export destination for Pakistan among ASEAN, Malaysia, and Pakistan has already signed an FTA with Malaysia. Among Northeast Asian countries, China and Pakistan has already signed FTA with China. And uh, among uh, uh, the developed countries, USA is the most important export destination for Pakistan. And the same analysis I did for the import side. So tariff gap is basically nothing. It's, it's just the difference between MFN tariff rate and the uh, applicable FTA tariff rate. And then we took the ratio of that and used as an independent variable in order to check the impact of different FTAs. So I did a tariff gap calculation uh, for Pakistan under selected FTAs from the export perspective and from the imports perspective. From the exports perspective, I have seen that uh, tariff gap for SAFTA is highest in both agriculture and manufacturing sectors. And from the import uh, side, tariff gap is highest for the uh, China and Malaysia FTAs. This means that uh, China and Malaysia offers uh, highest tariff reduction to Pakistani commodities under selected uh, commodities of FTAs. So methodology uh, and data sources, uh, I have used only six in effect FTAs, namely uh, SAFTA, Pakistan, China FTA, Pakistan, Sri Lanka FTA, Pakistan, Iran, Pakistan, Malaysia, and Pakistan, Mauritius. And data duration was from 2000 till 2010. And export and imports of Pakistan from 214 trade partners. All the data has been taken from UN Compact databases and uh, WTOI and WITS and Ministry of Commerce for the calculation of tariff gap. I have used two estimation models, one for export and the other one is for uh, imports. XIJT is the total bilateral exports from Pakistan to country J at JT with four alternatives. Number one alternative was total exports. Number two was agriculture, ex agricultural exports, which is the sum of SITC zero till four and manufacturing exports, which is the sum of SITC five till eight. And then finally exports at the SITC one digit level of disaggregation. And the same analysis I did with imports. So here, uh, beside standard uh, variables of gravity model, I have included uh, population of Pakistan and its uh, trading partners, real exchange rate, and uh, two time invariant variables, dummy variables, that is common border and common language, and then tariff variable itself, and then uh, the six in effect FTAs of Pakistan. I have calculated tariff gap for these uh, in effect uh, FTAs of for Pakistan, both for exports and both for imports. So for example, here B, uh, beta 10, SAFTA IJT represents that SAFTA variable proxied by two alternatives. Number one is tariff gap Pakistani exporters receive, receive from other SAFTA members in year T. And second, zero one dummy variable, one when export destination belongs to SAFTA in and after 2006 and zero otherwise. So after uh, the complete analysis, the major uh, results was that, that from the exports analysis of Pakistan, Pakistan-China free trade agreement has the strongest stimulating impact on Pakistan's exports, while other FTAs have, although positive, except SAFTA, uh, but their uh, magnitude is almost negligible. 
And when we compare agricultural and manufacturing exports, we can see that uh, the impact of tariff reduction on agricultural exports is much higher than uh, manufacturing. It might be due to the reason that uh, the compilation of rule of origin is quite easy because the nature of the agricultural products uh, or exports is uh, wholly obtained. Uh, when we compare the exports at the SITC, a one digit level of disaggregation, I found mixed uh, results across products and across FPAs. In the same analysis, I applied for the import side of Pakistan, where uh, from the total imports, the most important FPS for Pakistan was, for, uh, was of Malaysia and China. And for agriculture, the most important one was uh, Iran. And for manufacturing, again, China and uh, Malaysia was the important uh, FTS for Pakistan in order to boost uh, its trade. And uh, for SITC one digit level disaggregation estimations, I have found that SITC four, five, and six contributing more towards uh, uh, the impact of FTS. So, uh, when I compared, when comparing all FTAs, it was clear that tariff gap highest for China and Pakistan, Malaysia, FTA. So uh, this basically indicates that uh, my estimation results are in line with the observed changes of trade pattern of uh, trade pattern of Pakistan with its trading partners. If we look uh, from the exports perspective, or even if I look from the import perspective. So finally, uh, the study has examined the effect of FTAs on exports and imports using Pakistan as a case study during the period from 2000 till 2010. The gravity model is applied in examining the effects of FTAs. In this study, FTAs effect is measured by both the difference between MFN and preferential tariff rates, uh, which is referred as tariff gap, as well as the zero one dummy variable. The comparison of both the measures of an FTA suggests that the estimation based on the tariff gap is consistent with the observed changes in the trade pattern of Pakistan. The observed pattern of uh, uh, changes in trade pattern of Pakistan are clearly visible from these two graphs. So uh, from the uh, policy perspective, I can suggest three policies. Number one is the way how FTA is measured either by dummy variable or tariff gap has affected the magnitude of the estimates. And the magnitude is quite bigger when I uh, used tariff gap as a variable. And the second uh, rec uh, rec policy recommendation was that the importance of rule of origin has increased with the increase of FTAs around the world. And lastly, uh, trade, uh, trade among South Asian economies has long suffered from two-sided enmity between Pakistan and India. And because of this uh, factor, uh, I was unable to see a uh, positive impact of SAFTA agreement, even though I have observed that uh, the tariff gap was much higher uh, in the SAFTA agreement. So uh, that's all from my side. Thank you, Dr. Farid. So before I move on to the discussion, uh, Dr. Osman Khalid, let me ask uh, just a naive question. Can you tell us uh, clearly whether the uh, FTAs are beneficial for Pakistan or not? You said that these are in line with the trade patterns, but can you tell clearly whether or not these are beneficial for Pakistan? Secondly, I just want to know that since FTAs are signed as per, the countries are free to sign. Yes. The FTAs, there is no compulsion on them to sign. So it is the likelihood uh, is that the countries would sign the FTA only if it is beneficial for them. Otherwise, they would not sign if there, it is not beneficial for them because they have to sign it according to their free will. So then what is the point in checking this, that whether or not these are beneficial? Can you say something on this? Yes. Uh, so first, um... As per my analysis, because I did the analysis of only six in effect FTAs, so out of them, I have found that uh, Pakistan-China FTA has the strongest uh, trade export stimulus, uh, stimulating impact on Pakistan's exports. So for that, we have to see that uh, 
how much tariff has been reduced among different FTAs, and uh, what is the number of uh, sensitivity list uh, of products? Because if, uh, for example, in SAFTA, India put all almost all those products under sensitivity list in which Pakistan has comparative advantage. Then in that case, it would be difficult to take advantage of uh, these FTAs. So, I mean, you have to do a deep analysis of the products which are included in the FTAs and how much percentage of the tariff uh, is available on those products. Secondly, definitely countries are free to sign uh, these FTAs. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, beside tariff elimination or tariff benefits, there are many other uh, uh, like provisions or benefits you can take from FTAs. For example, you can independently uh, formulate rules of digital uh, uh, trade or e-commerce or SPS or TBT rules between Pakistan and China or Pakistan and India that would uh, enhance your trade volumes. So, other than tariff elimination or reductions, there are other benefits to formulate your, uh, to improve your trade policy rules with the help of these FTAs. So in that sense, I think uh, countries must uh, enter into sign these FTAs, but definitely there is a need to do an uh, in-depth analysis of these FTAs. So, okay, you said that uh, uh, Pakistan, China FTA is beneficial to Pakistan. What about others? Except SAFTA, others are also creating positive impact, but their impact is very much, uh, you can say, minor. Or this, this is might be because of the reason that China offered Pakistan tariff reduction on more than like uh, 12,000 products, whereas Sri Lanka offered tariff reduction only on 309 products. So, I mean, it depends how many products are included in those FTAs and how much tariff gap they are offering and what is the, uh, what are the items under sensitivity list. So many things uh, when you analyze, then you can make these FTAs beneficial for yourself. Okay, thank you. So now I'll re request a discussion, Dr. Usman Kader, to give, offer his comments. Dr. Usman Kader, over to you. Thank you. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, my comments are mainly based Dr. on- Dr. Usman, the... you may like to put on your video. Okay, gee, one second. So my comments are more on your uh, on the paper that was shared with me uh, for comments, and in that, uh, my first uh, question would have been, what is the purpose of your research? After reading the paper, it wasn't uh, too clear what it was till I got to the end. So uh, I mean, you've answered the question in the presentation, so it doesn't really apply. So we'll skip to the next. Um, you said that you want to see the impact of FTAs on Pakistan's economy. Yes. So uh, it would be, I think, helpful if you can shed some light on the trade flows between Pakistan and these uh, FTA partners, because uh, then you can relate it and uh, link your uh, re answers, uh, your uh, analysis to the trade flows that have actually happened. So you can know the situation on the ground. I think. Well, then uh, I'm wondering about this uh, tariff gap measure. It's very interesting. Um, is there some uh, literature we can uh, cite or look up for this? Uh, where does it come from? And uh, uh, how come you've chosen this rather than, for example, let's say a tariff simulation? Okay. Okay. And the um, same goes for the gravity equations. Uh, it would be helpful to have some sources for your uh, equations and why you've chosen those specific uh, specifications. Okay. Um, and uh, coming back to your uh, uh, empirical uh, analysis, uh, non-tariff barriers, I didn't see those in the specifications. So uh, is there a reason they're not there or, um, I mean, could you shed some light on that? Because I think they're very important now especially given that uh, um, tariffs are going down. So, okay, and uh, as I said before, if you could uh, you know, link your uh, analysis and your results to the situation on the ground, actually, uh, that would help put things in perspective. So uh, that'll also show whether the FTA provisions that we have 
are suiting our trade profile or not, because having 12,000 products with zero tariffs or low tariffs is not meaning much to us if we're not exporting or importing them. We, we have to be trading in them to be benefiting from it. And um, finally, last one is um, services are not included in your analysis, as far as I can see. Uh, do you think uh, you could shed some light on that, on services exports, because they're growing and they're a key component now of uh, government policy and the economy also? Thank you. Okay. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, the document, which uh, I guess shared with you was a knowledge brief, not in the form of working paper because my idea was uh, to uh, explain the results of- oh, Yes, program. that makes sense. Okay. Yes, so that's why that empirical mm -hmm. part and the literature support was missing, but uh, mm -hmm. I have links. If you are interested, I can show you all that stuff. Well, for the tariff gap, yes, please. That would be great. Thank you. So Dr. Farid, you can share the paper. Uh, with the committee as well as the, the Dr. Usman. Sure, sir. But, but yes, you can show you. Okay. So uh, for tariff gap, for example, uh, China offer tariff reductions to Pakistan in terms of five categories, category one, category two, category four, and five. And uh, the elimination of tariff since uh, in the start, it is preferential tariffs because like from 10% to 8%, then 5%, then zero. And after three years, it would be zero. So first of all, I took uh, the schedule of tariff reduction from Ministry of Commerce. I get all these HS codes or all those products which are entitled of tariff reduction from uh, China under category one. Okay, after uh, that, I took uh, the data of WTO uh, or MFN tariff rates for these products. I can show you. Okay, Dr. Farad, so offline you have Dr. Osman to discuss kar ji. So, Abhi, you have next question. Any questions from the floor? Sir? Dr. Manzoor has a question. Dr. Man Dr. Manzoor. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I have, do, do you have two or three minutes, sir? I yeah, sure. Please sure. go ahead. Sure. Okay. I think Pakistan's whole policy on FTAs is completely flawed. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been Pakistan's ambassador at WTO and I've been in negotiations on this SAFTA and Sri Lanka and all these bilateral FTAs and everything. So I can speak with some experience. Now, Pakistan started negotiating, oh, I, I think Farad said uh, about 32 agreements. And you know they've been just going on mindlessly. Yeah, let me give you an example. For example, we started negotiating with uh, Singapore in 2005. Singapore has zero tariffs, no tariffs. So you know we should have uh, our objectives clear. That if we are, uh, why why are we going to Singapore? Is it to get some investments? And would be we be able to reciprocate? because we have very high tariffs and they will give us, they say, take all the tariffs because I think only tariffs they have is in maybe alcohol and one or two other things, uh, but otherwise zero tariffs. So, you know, they, they give us the whole tariff and it's the same thing with many, many other countries. They have done their reforms, tariff reforms. They brought their tariffs very low. So uh, let me, uh, this example of say China. China has, uh, you know, uh, tariffs uh, due to their accession WTO and subsequently signing up with many countries. Very few tariffs are above seven eight percent. So they, if they give you a fifty percent concession, that means they will charge you four percent tariff. On the other hand, Pakistan has 
huge tariffs, say, on, on cars or anything, it could be up to 100%. So if we give them even 25%, it gives a big margin. So these things, our, our FTAs are not going to work, you know, the way we are. First, we have to reform our tariffs as other countries have done. And that's how, for, for example, um, look at Vietnam. I mean, they just started recently and they have now over uh, 60 FTAs, very successful. Similarly, uh, last time we had a seminar and there was this Costa Rican uh, uh, minister, uh, the spied uh, seminar. And, and she was the minister and they negotiated 50 because they have done their domestic reforms so they don't have any problem. And we have the serious problem that, that our tariff would not allow. So we are just doing this uh, exercise in futility. And another thing, you see, although FTA, uh, the coverage is not defined under WTO rules, but it says one thing very clear that you should eliminate tariffs and other restrictions on substantially all trade. Substantially is not defined, but it is meant to be more than 90% of trade. And even with China, even with several rounds now FTA, you look at any of our, whether it's auto industry or paper or steel and all these things are hidden. I mean, you know, we say, oh, so many hundreds of lines. And, and we just saw on this uh, transparency, there was a line, uh, that China has given us zero on horses and, and donkeys and pigs and other things. <laughs> these things, these tariff lines are meaningless unless you actually take what the trade is taking place and accordingly. So I really, uh, well, for example, you know, India is more or less like us, but, but they are still much more sensible. And, and their, their FTA is uh, just, for example, SEFTA because we don't have uh, a trade with India and, 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 and other neighbors. So we have not been able to increase our trade since SEFTA came into being. But in case of India, it, it quadrupled, uh, you know, so from 7 billion, it went to 28 billion and their imports went uh, so much up. <coughs> and similarly, when they signed with ASEAN about 10 years ago, and now from 40 billion, they went to 100 billion. But uh, my uh, question is that, one, if we, we are negotiating with 32 countries, we need to prioritize what exactly do we want to do, where, where, and second, unless and until we reform our tariffs, they, they, there's no use, you know, we, we, there will be all these constituencies. And now every time the Ministry of uh, uh, Commerce uh, goes and makes some progress, they send their uh, list to a Pakistan Business Council and Pakistan Business Council said, no, 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 you, there's no way you can sign it. So there they are stuck. All these FTAs have been in negotiations for the last 15 years, 10 years, uh, like, like, like say Turkey, uh, you know, 2005 started and it was expected even four or five years ago that we will be $10 billion by this year. And we have not even reached 1 billion. And we have not even signed it. We have not even entered into. So this exercise needs a, a deep rethink as to what exactly, because it's Pakistan only things that is it good or bad. The rest of the world is really jumping ahead. They have signed some 420. And they're going ahead because they're benefiting from that. And, and here we are all the time discussing this without having the basics right. Thank you very much. I'll stop here. Thank you, Dr. Manzoor, for a <clears throat> good narrative. Um, so, Dr. Farah, I think these are very valid comments. Uh, I would request uh, Dr. Osman Khaled to give his comments in writing, and perhaps you can do some situation analysis and the circumstances in which FTA is assigned as a sort of intro. And then also you need to address that why as Dr. Osman said, that there are 12,000 lines or something like this. So we, do we need to look into everyone, every, every line or what? So with these, uh, I think uh, you can resubmit uh, the full paper and the committee would be considering it for publication. Now let's uh, move to the next paper. Are there any more questions on this? No. So, Dr. Osman, Dr. Osman Ahmed, paper is on education and disability. So, Dr. Osman, it's over to you. 
Assalamualaikum. You can please put on your video. Sir, screen share हो रही है? जी हो रही है. अब video भी on कर लें please. Sir, video के बगैर ठीक रहेगा sir. अच्छा. Okay. So, uh, good morning, everyone. And thank you, Dr. Khaja, for giving me an opportunity uh, to have a discussion related to education for disabled children in Pakistan. So, uh, disability is one of the least visible but most compelling factor in educational marginalization. Learning needs uh, of the disabled demand special attention, and a study conducted by Plan International 2000. 13 indicates that children with disabilities are 10 times more likely not to attend the school than children without disabilities and children with disabilities are excluded from the education system in most of the developing countries uh, if we look at the 2017 population census uh, it conclude that the total disabled population is 0.48% and uh, around uh, uh, 0.9 million uh, disabled population. If we uh, look at the age bracket of five to fourteen years, uh, it's uh, almost uh, 26.9 percent disabled lies in in that bracket. And if we look at these uh, uh, the, the, these five to fourteen years uh, school going children, uh, out of this, the 15 15.43 uh, are children are are school going. And uh, out of uh, total disabled population, if we uh, look at the bracket zero to nineteen years, of total population uh, it lies in forty five point six percent. For the education of person with disability, special uh, uh, government attention needed, and so far different levels of government uh, of, in Pakistan have introduced around sixteen uh, policy interventions. And uh, so far the objective of his working paper uh, to review the special education policies in case of pakistan and make a comparative analysis with international practices and also highlight the bottlenecks uh, related to, to special education in form of infrastructure uh, so if we look at the what is disability so how we define disability has not been settled in the literature And different international and national agencies use their own proxies to define disability. For instance, uh, IFC explained the disability as an umbrella term for impairment, activity limitations, or participation restrictions. While WHO defined disability as complex phenomena reflecting the interaction between features of a person's body and features of the society in which he or she lives. well with the other hand the national education policy 2002 defined disabled as an individual unfit to get a profitable job because of inability caused by injury in or deformity or disease so and uh, alongside the definitional issues the data availability of uh, disabled uh, persons is also a major challenge For example, Pakistan population census 1998 shows 2.4 percent disabled, while 2017 census indicates only 0.4 percent population is disabled. Whereas World Bank uh, report on disability 2011 places the disability ratio in Pakistan at 13.4 percent. Besides, Assar 2019 report indicates that government schools have 20.4 percent children with disabilities so if we look at uh, uh, the policies overview in 17 uh, 4 years different education policies were made to improve education and more than dozen policy reports were launched by the government but inconsistency in implementation failed to achieve the required target if we look at existing national policies the policy document rarely mentioned children with disability For the first time in 1959, National Education Commission on Education introduced education for children with disabilities and recommended vocational education for mental retardation. But no significant uh, involvement uh, is observed till 1979. In 
80, the government established more than 200 special education institution and formation of federal directorate of the directorate general of special education. In 1996, the government introduced national policy for rehabilitation for the disabled. This was in fact, uh, the first policy on special education and primarily concerned with the implementation of programs for disabled and paid insufficient and paid insufficient attention to the critical matter of the curriculum. On the same account in 1999, government tabled the national policy for special education, which focused the need for change in public attitude to the disabled and proposed some monetary concessions to be made person with disabilities as well as providing them with legislative sports. So uh, the national policy for person with disability 2002 highlights the areas of intervention, which includes provision of special aids, equipment, alignment of policy between federal, provincial and district governments, change in curriculum, vocational training and advocacy. Related to the matter of special education, national policy 2009 seeks to equalize access to education through provision of special facilities. Inclusive education was part of that policy action, while chapter 15 of the national education policy 2017 is dedicated to special education and inclusive education. The target of participation rate of special children have been fixed as 50% by 2025. The main policy provision includes expanding access to special needs children, allocation of 5% education budget for special education, provision of modern technologies, teaching teach, and teaching learning aids, transport facilities, special education institutions, in-service training, staff development. So if we look at the provincial side, the devolution of education uh, from uh, federal subject to provincial level has further complicated the issue in relation to those with disabilities. After the 18th Amendment, devolution of education has a negative effect on education, especially for children with disabilities, because that mission consequently dropped down on the priority list of provinces. After the 18th Amendment, all provinces are required to amend and adopt the relevant laws. Unfortunately, all acts and commissions passed by the provincial government have not discussed the provision of special education in true spirit, except in case of in SIDH. Since the Right of Children and Free Compulsory Education Act 2013 aims to ensure all children between the age five to 16 years are entitled to free and compulsory education. So uh, if we look at uh, the, the, the observation, the big question is that have these policies and acts achieved their objective or not? Around 85%, uh, according to the 2017 census, around 85% children with disability being out of school when they are supposed to attend the school puts a big question mark on effectiveness of these policy. For the effectiveness, uh, formulation and implementation of special education policy, a comprehensive understanding and identification of the children with disability is crucial. Uh, Although uh, the National Census 2017 did not acknowledge the importance uh, of this matter, uh, but uh, after uh, the uh, intervene, uh, intervene of uh, Supreme Court, uh, they uh, adopted uh, uh, a binary approach. So uh, I'm discussing initially uh, the three questions, uh, three courts were allotted, one for male, second for female, and third Third, three, the number third court for transgender. On the order of Supreme Court, there are three additional courts were added to uh, added four for disabled men, five for disabled women, and six for disabled transgender. The incorporation of a complicated question in mid cycle of census collection has raised concern around the reliability of the data. It can be seen that before Supreme Court intervention, the state was not inter interested to collect the data of disabled persons. Bureau of Statistics has simply fulfilled with the Supreme Court order without making adequate measures. For the identification of persons with disabilities, traditional binary approach is not appropriate. This approach does not account the individuals who suffered from 
Undiagnosed disabilities are those who do not wish to identify as disabled due to family pressure and stigma. There is a need to move forward from binary to multidimensional approach. Although after the 18th Amendment, education is a provincial subject, it is a responsibility of a central government to develop a consensus on policy formulation among provinces. Policies that support education of disabled children should match the available resources in order to achieve the results. So if we look at around the world, the Australia is a classical example where they have uh, introduced Disability Discrimination Act 1992 and Disability Standards for the Education 2005 that make it mandatory for all educational providers mm -hmm. to provide quality education for all children. And as a result of their policy intervention, almost all 89% children with disability go to primary or secondary school. And the situation of special education is much better in developed countries as compared to developing countries. Like India and Sri Lanka are also struggling to improve its education system and provide quality education for disabled children. So, there is an infrastructure issue. If you look at uh, uh, the way forward, there's a need of uh, teacher training, community involvement, comprehensive data availability. Uh, state must respond to education needs of all children under the one roof, early identification and inter intervention through health department, appropriate education and training through education and special, edu uh, through special education, financial support and social protection through finance department, the social welfare department and legal protection and access to justice. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Smart. So the discussion is uh, Dr. Jahangir. I think uh, Dr. Jahangir has a meeting at the Planning Commission and unscheduled meeting came up. But uh, Dr. Jangir has uh, sent his comments to the Working Paper Committee. I will request uh, uh, Dr. Saman Nazir to please read out the comments. But before that, uh, can you tell us, uh, Dr. Osman, that um, basically what have, I have inferred that basically we have done a situation analysis of the state of disability vis-a-vis -vis education. Beyond this, uh, have you gone? Uh, have you gone beyond this in the paper, other than discussing the situation? Sorry. Yes, sir. yes, sir. The, the, basically, this is. Uh, uh, I just thought that's uh, some uh, policy overview or uh, the situation analysis uh, that uh, it is a most uh, uh, neglected area. Although education is also a neglected area, but disabled population, or disabled children, are. Uh, 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 neglected area. So you can say it's also a situation analysis or a policy analysis. Okay. Uh, so let's move to Dr. Saman Nazi. Dr. Saman. Um, thank you, Dr. Adris. Um, thank you, Dr. Usman, for your interesting presentation. So here are the comments. Um, that is given by the Dr. Ajangir um, uh, Khan. Um, first is um, uh, the the paper needs abstract um, and he further goes like this that why are statistics of the enrollment of not disabled children given if you want to give these statistics in the introduction it is important to connect these with the dis uh, with the discussion okay. uh, also statistics on the disabled children are old um, and he suggests that this needs to be updated um, the author said that there is a definition issue in the disability in the literature. Different definitions have been given, but the differences have not been highlighted, or the issues with, the, with these definitions have not been discussed. Please discuss the context that why definitional issues are important in this case. Um, he says that box one and table one and two are not connected to the, neck, uh, to the text and the context. Um, it's uh, this, this uh, section needs improvement. Uh, the introduction is rather long and inconsist inconsistent, needs academic discussion that links with the theoretical discourse for the identification of the problem and contribution to the literature. Okay. 
um, there is uh, no literature review and conceptual framework at uh, standalone entities needs both for the better comprehension organization of the paper. Dr. Jangir suggests that the author starts with the definitional issues in disability with result in the differences in statistics from the different surveys. Um, he further says that the policy uh, overview section is also vague. It's not clear that why different policies were in, enacted, how these policies are linked with the definitional issues. Uh, his last comment uh, uh, is on the author says that there were policy implementation issue. What were these issues or simply the policies were not implemented in the first place? Uh, need further elaboration. And that's it. That's all from Dr. Zangir's comments. Thank you, Dr. Saman. Uh, Dr. Osman, would you like to respond? No, sir, I will incorporate the comments. Okay. Any questions from the floor? Okay, there are no questions. So Dr. Osman, maybe perhaps um, you can, you know this uh, structure, the working paper quite well. So maybe probably you can bring it, if it is possible to bring it according to the structure of the working paper, okay. otherwise, uh, Maybe we can consider it for, um, the pilot can consider it for some other format like policy viewpoint or something or knowledge brief or something like this. So I'll get back to you. Thank you. And thank you, Anil Hafiz. With, uh, with Islam.